Mortimer was busy taking a dump in his 600 million wood cabin, and he was reading this old magazine from Earth. Is that how we reach 1 trillion? By starting our own luxury fashion line? Count me in. Join us as we establish Mortimer's most ambitious project yet. A fashion company. Starting in the middle of some lifeless sea ice, of course. And our main competition, the Rimworld, utilizes many unethical materials. Materials such as thrombofur, requiring the slaughter of some poor, innocent, and endangered tree-humping thrombos. You have Devil's Strand, the poor man's hyperweave, typically utilized by many of the drug cartels in Rimworld. And you have Hyperweave, and no one really knows how to produce any Hyperweave. And RimX is a company that prides itself on ethical acquisition and production of goods. So we are going to be using one of the most classical resources used to clothe mankind since the dawn of creation. And no, it is not human leather, as what those conspiracy theorists on Bluetube and ClickClock want you to believe. It is cloth, sourced only from our soon-to-be-established manufacturing center, which is built upon resources from recycled waste packs. And we start alone this time, because our previous workers are now unionized and are on a general strike. Or something like that. Instead, we will be using Fabricors. Perfectly legal and on board, of course, along with other mechanoids until our loyal, well compensated, and properly cared for workers cease their stupidity. Thankfully, we start at a very convenient location, and so I only have to build a room and not haul any of my goods. You know what, let's also build a room for myself. Not that I would really need a bed. After all, I am a billionaire, and almost all of my body has been replaced with bionics. Or genetically modified. Alright, Marimer, stop pretending to eat and start building up our factory. Uh, look at me having to build everything by hand. If my workers keep striking like this, I may as well replace them completely with artificial robots. And it's a good thing I'm equipped with bionic hands. Makes everything so much easier. And for our power, we'll be utilizing these advanced toxifier generators. And since it has the word advanced in it, it means it produces five times more power than a regular toxifier generator, to a base of around 7,000 watts. And let's give it its own room to make it easier to section it off in case of accidents. And I'll put my workshop directly due north of it. Now there is this ancient borehole blocking the way. And I honestly don't know what the purpose of this object is. It's been so long since I've used one. So we're gonna remove it. And unfortunately the toxifier generator does not work. Because the entire map is apparently polluted to the brim. I guess I'll have to rely on a more conventional power source for now. And what is more reliable than the classic wind turbine? A power source that never ever fails, am I right? Time to seal off both parts of the base. You know, assuming Mortimer stops staring at that wall. There he goes. I almost forgot how slow this game is at 1x speed. And normal speed with an enhanced character too. Kind of refreshing actually. And I just have to ignore the intrusive thoughts in my head telling me to press that 4x speed button. That has been modified into 20 times speed. It shouldn't be too hard, right? Anyway, let's finish up with a battery and some pollution pumps so we can start recycling so that this toxifier generator actually does something instead of taking up space. Let's start putting up this alloy pack splitter into our workshop, which as her name implies, splits alloy packs into their resource components, steel, gold, and plasteel. Mortimer here is busy building our pollution pumps. And after that, he gets really, really bored and starts cloud watching. Are there even clouds near the poles? Eh, you do you, Mortimer. Pollution pumps done, alloy splitter done, and my sleeping area done, and research bench in progress. And we're running quite low on steel, so it's time to start recycling. And this is where the magic happens. Here we pump those dangerous toxic waste packs with even more toxic waste, so that it will become less toxic and eventually usable. And using this alloy pack splitter, it is split into steel, plasteel, and gold. The science of magic. Er, the magic of science, I mean. And let's put down this death rest casket. Which is definitely not for me. Don't believe the lies they tell you. Marmor Goth is not a vampire. His skin does not sparkle under the sunlight. This coffin is strictly for aesthetic purposes. And now that we've also got our first bit of gold, it's time to place down this pollution fast pump, which will pump pollution, but faster. So let's build more, and more, and more, forming a nice line of pollution pumps. Meanwhile, a colossal aero fleet and its spawn decides to pass right through our base. 
Don't these dumb animals know that Mortimer has already marked this area with his scent? Ah, yeah, right. They don't have a nose to smell with. Ah, fine, we'll let them live. Hopefully they don't randomly die and set fire to my base. And here we are, the perfect tinder to the flame. A group of wasters from the cancer trash. Led by Red Boogie. Are these guys insane? Well, they are the raiders. I am the richest person in this rim world. What are they doing sending one person against me? Well, nevertheless, we can't let them kill the air fleets near our base. Or it will set fire to the rain. And Mortimer charges off with a glitter world rifle in hand and transforms the enemy into a pixelated blood stain on the ground. Good night, boogies. Such fun, much adrenaline. Now most of what he carries is useless, but he did drop some wake up. We can probably sell that for a quick buck. A quick buck to work, I mean. The grind never stops. Okay, let's equalize the left and the right sides. So let's make a line of pollution pumps going leftwards. Paired with another alloy pack splitter to keep up with the increased toxic packs we will produce eventually and a Toxifier Generator to keep up with the increased demand for power. And it is not looking good. And done. Now a good thing about Toxifier Generators is that if we ever reach the point where the map is cleaned of pollution, we can always make more. Not to mention these provide a lot of power. And we are 6 minutes into the video, and you must be wondering, I thought we were supposed to be a fashion company. Where is the fashion? Well, the big problem is we don't have steel, of which we require very large amounts in order to start for our hydroponics for cloth. And recycling is a very slow process, but we'll get there eventually. Now a wanderer named Ludmilla wants to join us. And normally I wouldn't say no to an offer of free unpaid labor, but this is a heavily polluted map filled to the brim, and we've barely removed any pollution. She will probably die within 10 seconds of coming into this base, and so we have to reject. Sorry Lud, you'll probably have better luck in the wilderness, or probably not. Either way, you're dead. Sorry. This is going a lot slower than I expected, and I can't really produce any extra labor besides myself because I just don't have any steel to work with. No steel to make mechanoids from, no steel to build pollution fast pumps. This is going to be a very slow grind, and to help alleviate our problems, the game sent us a gigolo. All the way to the north of the map. Is this the angel we've been waiting for? Oh, she has paralytic abasia which in the room world means as good as dead. Well, we'll just pretend that we never saw you in the first place. Managing this base by myself is getting pretty lonely, and I think it means we need to start trading, and we only have 32 steel left. But you know what we can do once we get 18 steel? We can build this mech band antenna, which will summon a War Queen plus her aides. Let's see what the first wave will attract. War Queen, Pikeman, and Scythers. That shouldn't be too difficult to handle. Let's open up Pandora's box. And now we wait. The War Queen lands on the easternmost side of the map. And this is very beneficial for us, because this means more space to run around in. Let's go, dog. Now I don't want to injure myself, and thankfully, Mortimer has the ability to make himself invisible. Yep, everything is totally invisible. We immediately fire at the mechanoids, and they perish after seeing our amazing disguise. This triggers their mechanoid brains to start charging into my base, and so Mortimer just unleashes a barrage of bullets, and eventually all of them are dead. Good job, Mortimer. A better use of invisibility powers than going to the bathroom for female superheroes so that you can goon over them, am I right? And I forgot I don't have the machining tech yet, so I'm unable to process those mechanoid corpses into steel. And while we were busy researching for those technologies, a combat supplier from the Hourlure Unification decided to visit us, and they had a very peculiar member in their caravan. An exact clone of me. Now I'm 100% sure that I never gave my consent for my genetic data to be available to the public. And that means they are in direct violation of Executive Order Number 5569, which states that only volunteers or captured prisoners are allowed to give their genetic material. So this means war. Actually, it's fine. They can replicate my body, but they can't replicate my greatness. Also, he's wearing a pink parka. What a loser. Who needs Mortimer Goth at home when you can have Mortimer Goth himself? I will spare you, your stupid caravan, and your stupid faction. For now. And anyway, all of the corpses have been dragged to the base, and now we just have to build the machining table. That is quickly done. Now it's time to start breaking them down. And this should give us around 150 units of steel. That is a pitiful amount of steel. 
Summoning those cost me around 2 components and 50 steel. Disassembling made me around 150 plus these 3 slag chunks. For a net total of around 50 steel and a little bit of plast steel, that is very low. Ah uh, well, might as well build this electric smelter instead of complaining. And we do have a bit of uranium lying around, so let's use that to expand our workshop. Bring up these for a decent amount of steel. Although we are a bit short on uranium, it will probably be fine. We are starting to accumulate a bit of alloy packs, so let's build some more alloy pack splitters. We should also expand our pollution fast pump system, because we've barely cleaned anything. So let's convert this electric smelter and machining table into usable resources, and push our pollution fast pump network further east. Let's do it on the northwest portion of the network too. That should give us a decent amount of waste packs to process. I really need to start trading to secure the resources for my base. But the thing is, I don't have anything to sell. Except for this trash. Which needs to be processed into trash bricks first, and then into sculptures. So let's build ourselves an art bench using our wood and steel. And we are out of resources once again. So let's save up 50 steel and summon ourselves another war queen. This group landed way up north. Alright, Marimer, activate stealth mode. And let's start farming these mechanoids. Alright, where are they? They're not here. Did I just hallucinate everything? Oh wait, there they are. All this steel starvation is making my head spin. Alright, enough yapping, start shooting. Dog reaches his position and now starts blasting. And these guys are actually pretty tough. They might make it to our base and destroy one of our precious pollution fast pumps. Or maybe not. I guess I'll have to focus down on the quicker ones first. Do they actually stop if you kill the War Queen first? I kind of forgot. Okay, change of plans. War Queen first. Come on, dog, you have your orders. Stop hitting everything else. Start hitting the War Queen. And it's down. But everything else is still up. Okay, let's finish them off. Only a few left anyway. Let's chase down these Scythers before they manage to do anything. And kill off the last centipede. Nice natty dodge there, Mortimer. And a whole lot of mechanoid corpses to shred. And before we even get to do anything, we are raided by the Deep Band. And they send us these two buffoons. They never learn, do they? Alright, time to fertilize the ground with iron. Oh, and we didn't kill them. But I don't have a prison yet or a way to transform them into fabric cores. Ah well, gotta leave their corpses. I hope the next raid comes when I actually have resources to build a prison. Well, let's rebuild our machining table here using material from these deconstructed fast pumps. And the shredding we go. Oh, and chunks of a spacecraft. Nice, more steel and more components. Won't say no to that. And we're done shredding mechanoids, so it's time to disassemble this table. And I feel like we have enough steel to make ourselves a singular mechanoid. So let's plop down a mech gestator and a subcore encoder. And I typically like placing my mechanator room in a separate room from my workshop. But since we're very low on resources, we can put it here for now. Let's gestate ourselves a lifter, so I don't have to pick up all the trash in the map. And let's put a mech recharger here where our future mechanator workshop will be. And thankfully Marmor sees how disgusting the workshop is, and so he starts cleaning it by himself. Great job. And you know who's not doing a good job right now? Me, because I forgot to put a trash compactor. And so I have an art bench there taking up space, and it is not producing any art. And if I remember correctly, you need 450 units of something to create a grand sculpture. And I have 416 unprocessed trash bags. And since we have a surplus of plasteel, I think it's okay if we use plasteel for this one. Okay, let's build it right here. And there it goes compacting trash and creating a lot of toxic gas as a byproduct. And thankfully, Mortimer does not care about such trivial problems. And that's because he has been genetically modified in the Glitter World to be immune to toxic gas. Being a Glitter World kid certainly has its perks. But let's build another one of these trash compactors to speed things up. And the game decides to slow us down by sending us a solar flare. Solar flares are certainly the most boring vanilla event ever. They don't even last long enough for you to get raided at. Unless you're playing Randy Random. And I've never even actually experienced that while playing Randy Random. Can he fire off events that quick in succession? Probably not. And now we have to spend hours in game doing absolutely nothing. And not even a few minutes after the power is stored, we get a psychic storm. And these storms are very destructive and last for around an entire day. And the lightning it spawns will destroy pretty much anything under it when it strikes. Hopefully it doesn't do too much damage. After around half a day, the storm withers away. And let's inspect our base. And our base miraculously suffers absolutely zero damage. What luck. And it's been a tough few days, so dog needs his beauty sleep. 
And again, Room X would like to reiterate that Dog is not a vampire. He just likes sleeping under coffins, is all. Oh, and it looks like while I turned my brain off during the psychic storm, our lifter mechanoid finished gestating. Which is perfect timing, because while Dog is sleeping, it's going to make milkshakes that will bring all the boys to the yard. Nah, actually it's just gonna bring all of the toxic waste packs back to storage for processing. One eternity later. Alright, Marimer is back. And the first thing he does is immediately build a sculpture. And come on dog, we don't really need a sculpture right now. Gotta process those toxic waste packs first. Uh, hello? Okay fine, play your games. And then go back to work. Alright, trash done. Let's finish up this sculpture. And let's build ourselves a comms console so that we can get ourselves some steel from the passing trade ships. And sculpture finished? Let's see how much it's worth. 905. We can sell it for double of that. Can't we, dog? Now we just have to wait for a poor, innocent trade ship to pass by and give us their hard-earned money for this disgusting trash. Oh wait, we already have one. I didn't even notice. Hello, edge travelers. And with dog's amazing ability to negotiate, we can sell this sculpture made of absolutely useless trash for 1,555. And with an additional 2,000 silver in our pockets, we are going to buy 3,700 units of steel. And with all these resources, let's finish our mechanitor room, create a room for our prisoners, who will probably not live long enough anyway, because they will be turned into fabric wars. But I still do need beds to capture them, so we have no choice but to build one. Let's also build another power generator just in case. A bathroom for personal use. A bathroom for our prisoners. A multi-analyzer so that we can start researching hydroponics. And once again, we are interrupted. This time a raid from the Blue Otter Clan. Oh yeah, and a bulk goods trader passed by too. Alright, let's deal with this pathetic charade of a raid. Once again, they send one person who gets immediately destroyed. And back to sculptures we go. Another sculpture made from completely useless trash. I wonder what we can sell this for. Alright, one trash sculpture for two slaves. So that is the value of human life. Let's start loading up this subscore rip scanner, which will give us the cores we need in order to make fabric cores. Oh, finally, we get to name ourselves. Of course, as per usual, we are Rim X, and our company will be named Kuchi. That is a horrible name to be honest. Maybe I should have went with Louis Croton. Or maybe even Kelvin Crime. Our subscore rip scanner has been loaded, and so we are going to send this poor unfortunate soul. Sorry, dead dampek. And in she goes. And do not worry, dear folks at home. This process is completely painless. In fact, they're even put in stasis. And they will feel no pain, and you shouldn't feel any shame. And the process is done. While you might see a dead body, I can see the future. And it is gloriously filled with robots. Now time to dispose, mm, I mean, give this body a proper funeral. We're not just gonna leave it around to rot somewhere. But anyway, let's load her up again. And load up Anarchist before his frail human body succumbs to the cold. And honestly, we're doing them a very big favor. Their internal organs could have been harvested and sold by a wannabe drug lord, and instead they're working for my mega corporation. We get ourselves another trade ship named the Unstoppable Condor Traders. And I have exactly one trash brick sculpture for them. And we're gonna trade it for some steel and some components. We'll start gestating a fabric ore, which will take around a day. And you may be wondering, where is the fashion? And don't worry, we are going to start right here. This is the hydroponics room where we will grow our cloth. So let's build some advanced hydroponics basins, plop down a few heaters, and start growing corn. Alright, alright, we'll do cotton for the second one. I just needed to secure the food supply of our manufactory. Even though no one really eats here, it may come in handy one day. And holy 40, we're going to need more heaters. Let's build two more. Hmm, okay, maybe three more. Okay, Martimer is planting, which means the temperature is probably good enough. And while we're waiting for the cloth to grow, let's replace our old art bench with this state-of-the-art electric art bench so that we can produce art at 371 speed. Hmm, this cotton is taking a while to grow. And there's nothing much to do at this point. We're just waiting for stuff to happen. Five minutes later. Come on, you stupid plant. Stop resting and start growing. Finally. Okay, let's harvest this up. 
and we get a grand total of 99 cloth. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, maybe it'll fit a single outfit, maybe? Okay, let's build ourselves an electric tailor bench. And I hope I can create at least one outfit. Hmm, let's see. What do people like paying way too much for? And I know that some shirts can sell for several thousand. But for now, let's stick to a classic suit jacket. And each one costs 80 cloth. So I can make exactly one. Alright, dog, work your magical bionic hands. And give us a suit that is worth thousands at least. Yo, here we are. A masterwork cloth suit jacket. Worth only 385. Well, that's not much. For now, at least. Because now that we have a base and some money, we can start manipulating the free market. But first, we need a dumb idiot trade ship to come to our base. And hopefully buy this cloth suit jacket. And since we've got nothing better to do, may as well summon another war queen. Now Mortimer here has a few more tricks up his sleeve. And the first is firing focus, which greatly increases his attack speed. Guided shot for double range and frenzy for double damage. Okay, let's see how powerful this is. But first, let me get invisible and attack. Oh my god, now that is really, really fast. This is at 1x speed, by the way. Alright, kill the rest. Go, destroy. I turned my rifle into a minigun. Really nice. And we've got a whole lot of mechanoid corpses to disassemble. You know I had to haul all those corpses by myself. And so I guess I need way more lifters. And mecha chargers too. Ah, uh, here we are. Hello there, buddy incorporated. Would you like to buy some of my sculptures? Hey, wait a minute. When did I get a second cloth suit jacket done? Eh, doesn't matter. So, do you want to buy my two trash sculptures and two suit jackets? You can't say no? Alright then. And in exchange, I'll buy some advanced components and components from you, a bit of steel, and of course, some cloth. And this is an essential part of our plan to become a trillionaire. You see, as supply goes down, Prices go up, and that is the beauty of a free market. And we're going to abuse that free market by buying every single piece of cloth the RimWorld has to offer, transforming it into clothes, with the RimX branding of course via our subsidiary coochie, and making tons of money. But we can't do that with just this teeny tiny factory. We're gonna need more. So let's get to work. Let's add some more tailor benches so that our fabric cores can also start producing. And for our second electric tailor bench, I think I'm going to go with a classic shirt and tie. Yes, we are now a proper fashion manufactory, instead of a fashion company masquerading as a pollution recycling company. And the best way to view the value of a commodity is by using this structure called a trading terminal. And before anyone asks, no, RimX does not trade in NFTs and cryptocurrencies. We only do actual products or actual services. Crypto is dumb. But anyway, let's check on the price of cloth. Now since the RimWorld isn't magic, it does take a while before the prices update. So let's keep ourselves busy with all the cloth we bought and check a bit later. Uh, another idiot. Wait, Multica Industries does not trade in clothes. Well, screw you too. We need to expand our storage space as well. So let's expand this northwards. Oh, and a Blood Moon has arrived. But it doesn't matter, none of us are vampires anyway, am I right? We also have a lot of Imogen stacked up, so it's not a problem. Marmor's getting bored, so let's build him a chess table. And a stool to go along with it. Oh, and we get ourselves the first useful quest in the game. 99 toxic waste packs in exchange for a tech prof, sub persona core, and 6 glitter world medicine. That's a win-win for me. Let's build an orbital trade beacon under the newly expanded part of our storage room. And let's expand our power too, so that we can place those pollution fast pumps farther. This base gonna need way more steel. We've accumulated a decent amount of clothing. Now all we need is a dumb idiot trader to sell it to and buy more cloth from. And that dumb idiot is definitely not a combat supplier. Come on, stop teasing me. Ooh, a spacecraft chunk. Now that is not a tease. But I do wonder how it made it inside my roofed hydroponics room without breaking the roof because those plants are still well and alive, and definitely not dying from the cold. But let's not worry about that and be happy that we have a few more materials. Let's check on the prices of cloth again, and it looks like it's gone up by 1.1 silver, a change of 72% from the last time. Ooh, and we've got ourselves a black market trader. The convenient shipping. How convenient for me. Okay, let's do it. Sell this singular sculpture and all of these clothes. 
netting us a grand total of 12,600. Let's buy all of your cloth and some plasteel. Ah, uh, here we are. More material for me to process. Our production capabilities are expanding quite rapidly, so I think it's okay for me to expand the workshop. We shouldn't really have any more shortages of steel now that we've started to abuse the market. Let's expand our alloy pack splitters too, so that we can be self-sufficient with our steel. But that's still very far in the horizon. Let's add two more trash compactors, because trash sculptures are a very important part of our early game economy. And let's do a quick wealth check. We are currently worth 250,000 silver. Okay, that is still very far away from 1 trillion, but it's nice to know that we're making progress. And evidently not everyone is happy with my progress, because once again we are attacked by the Blue Otter Clan. And instead of sending one singular person, they sent three this time. And of course Dog immediately starts blasting, and we have ourselves a singular prisoner. Or should I say, a singular fabric war. Don't worry Ake Alfberg, you will be made into something more useful. We just gotta patch you up a bit before you become a fabric war. Alright, load her up and let it rip, then let it grow. And while we're busy stocking up on clothes, the game decides to crash an ancient fungal ship on our head. Ugh, look at that, some gas is seeping out of it, some rot stink. Mortimer should be fine, you know, so long as they don't have any infectious diseases. Alright, let's go, dog. Holy, these guys are as tanky as mechanoids. But we have unlimited bullets. Oh look, one of them survived. Okay, we gotta get him first. And he is thankfully not at risk of dying. So we can leave him there and destroy the fungal ship first. Alright dog, start blasting. Come on, unload it faster. Nice work. That is one ship down and we have a few more resources to spend. And Fabricor 3 finished gestating while we were busy. And our storage is also kind of full, so let's expand it first. And gestate ourselves another lifter. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about that guy. Let's turn him into a fabric war. And I guess the game wants us to keep making more fabric wars because this guy landed near our base. Let's put it to bed and ah, perfect timing, a solar flare. Now we have to wait. And Dog also does need some death rest. So I may as well go to sleep for now. Surely nothing bad will happen while I'm death resting. Ah uh, great, Carve went berserk. Now none of my mechanoids can hit him because I am asleep and so I have to wake up early. Alright, let's beat his ass. I'm trying to get some sleep here, you POS. Ugh, there, done and done. And just for making that ruckus, to the subscore rip scanner you go. Ugh, a bolt goods trader. The trade ship of our dreams. The loyal export company. Loyal to whom, I wonder. But anyway, let's sell up all of these clothes for a nice 76,000 and let's buy ourselves some cloth, some advanced components, and some steel. And you still got 24k left over, nice. Oh and we get ourselves another pollution dump quest. A prestige cataphract helmet and some plasteel, plus 188 toxic waste packs. The game is being really really nice to me, I wonder what it will send next time. You know, in retaliation for being so nice to me. No one's really nice just to be nice these days. Everything is purely transactional. Ooh, a black market trader. Unfortunately, we have nothing to offer you. But I assure you, everyone is busy at the factory. But the factory could always be busier. So let's build ourselves some of these bandwidth nodes so that we can create more mechanoids. But you know, quantity isn't everything. We also need quality. And the best way to increase the quality of your mechanoids is by building a mech booster. And better mechanoids means more clothes. It looks like acidic smog has begun to set it in this part of the world. And thankfully I'm employing 100% mechanoid labor except for myself. So I don't have to pay anyone hazard pay. Aw oh, game you give me acidic smog and a raid? Aw oh, you shouldn't have. Wait that's actually a lot of raiders. I hope at least three of them survive. Alright Martimer, do your thing. Ah, uh, what luck. Two survivors. Let's capture one and... What? A wayward assembler? What'll attack us next? A local factory? Anyway, we have to deal with this first. And dead. Alright, we gotta go back to our prisoners. And oh, they're all dead. God damn it. At least I managed to capture one of them. You know, before all of this stuff started happening. Oh, and no. He also went berserk. He is barely alive. And I don't think I can punch him even once without killing him. Yep, that's right. 
God damn it, everything's going to hell. I feel like I'm playing at Randy Random. Everything happened in quick succession. At least the factory didn't burn down. And in the span of a few minutes, I got Kessler Syndrome, a cold snap. Both are negative events that have zero impact on me. And then you have a defoliator chip, which does have an impact on me. All happening in the span of a few in-game hours. Cassandra Classic is now going nutty with it. Or maybe the game just broke because of the thousands of mods I have. But we do have to deal with the defoliator ship either way. So dog, do your thing. Our storage is now pretty full and we're just waiting on a trade ship to abuse. But I feel like we could also expand our hydroponics. Because currently we're not producing much cloth ourselves. And that is a waste of money. So let's plop down a few of these advanced hydroponics. Set a few to psychoids because I will need them eventually. And the rest is cotton. Okay, wealth check, we are now at 600,000. Up from 250,000. Progress is progress. And storage is storage. And if my calculations are correct, I would need to stock up on more than 100,000 clothes if I am to reach trillionaire. And I think I'm only at around 100. Lovingly made by me and my fabric wars. Not that it matters. Let's once again expand our workshop with more tailoring benches, expand our power supply, and get some actual beauty sleep. Hopefully no one interrupts me this time. And eventually Orange Feather Solutions comes to trade with us. Unfortunately they do not buy clothes, but fortunately we have around 10,000 in the bank. So let's sell our singular trash brick sculpture, get some components, and the rest in cloth. Perfect, more material to work with. And we're gonna need a storage for all of this. And again, let's expand. You know, I'm wondering, but I think my entire map would become a storage space once I get closer to Trillionaire. But for now, let's expand here. A bulk goods trader and a black market trader decide to visit us. Let's trade with the black market trader first, the Red Pig Transport Company, transporting some very, very, very illegal goods, and also willing to buy every single one of our clothes. Wait, that's all the cloth you had? I still have 150k in the bank. Good thing we have another trade ship in the docket, the Loyal Hair Interstellar. Let's sell the rest of our clothes here and buy their cloth as well. Ooh, we got a slave ship too. Perfect. I'm going to get all of you and let everyone peacefully ascend into Fabric Core Hood. And we are now at 1.4 million, the first milestone in our journey to Trillionaire. And we really have a long way to go, but we have our factory set up and the future is looking bright. Hi guys and welcome to my first attempt at a longer RimWorld video. I typically play this game at 20x speed, and it's a bit refreshing to play this game at mostly 1x and 2x speed, but it does get pretty hard to do sometimes. But I feel like to get a better story, I need the game to go slower. And if you guys have any suggestions or comments, please put them down in the comment section below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Next week we'll try to reach the next milestone which is 1 billion, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all and have a nice day.